everybody's journey is different with visual snow, but to my fellow sufferers or someone who's affected by visual snow, or family members of those who've been affected, I would say that you're going to be okay. And that was the biggest thing for me is I was, I was wanting to hear that from doctors. I wanted to hear from a doctor that I was gonna be okay. And I never got peace of mind. Just by virtue of living my life, I understand that visual snow is not gonna kill me. It changes the way I see the world, but I am the same person I was before I got this, if not stronger. So take visual snow as what it is. So it's, it can be a challenge to live with, but there are ways to work around it and you can actually use it as something to empower you. Whether you <laughs> start something like the Visual Snow Initiative and get people talking on that end, or maybe just continue with your life the way that you were before this even happened to you. And even if you were born with it, you're just like everybody else, quite frankly, you just see a bit different. And even though it can be rough, we have answers and solutions looming and there's great things coming on the horizon. So I would say to stay positive, stay hopeful, and know that we're taking care of this. It's being worked on and in the meantime, enjoy your life to the best of your abilities. Well, if you have a family member or a loved one with visual snow, I think the first and most important thing you can do is just be understanding uh, that there is something wrong with them and that uh, they're not just making it up. Um, I know from my own personal experience, the, uh, the idea of going from doctor to doctor and having half of them think that you're making it up or that you're crazy uh, is really disheartening to the point where you start to question yourself like, well, maybe I am just crazy or something like that. But um, I think having someone that's very supportive, very understanding, someone that's, um, you know, willing to be empathetic to what you're going through I think is tremendously important because as of right now I mean there's nothing we can specifically do in order to treat this condition as of right now but there are certainly things that we can do in order to manage the symptoms and and live uh, you know live a good life despite the visual snow. Firstly that uh, visual snow is an organic phenomenon that uh, people who have it are not psychologically sick. They have a, 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 a ph truly disruptive phenomenon. Uh, secondly, um, that going blind is probably not an issue. Thirdly, that people need to organise and report this uh, so that people get a, we get a perception of, of its true frequency. And fourthly, that they should agitate for there to be funds for, for research for what is a very disruptive phenomenon far more widely spread than is, uh, is otherwise accepted. I guess what I would like to tell people who are affected by visual snow as well as their families is that there's a whole community of researchers out there that are looking for, firstly, an understanding of the um, underlying mechanisms involved, but essentially looking for a cure, looking for treatments, and that is underway and we are doing that. I'd say to people with visual snow, first, we should apologise from our broadly, uh, you know, on a, like as a physician. We haven't done well enough uh, over the years, not talking about me, but in general terms. Um, should have, more should have been done sooner and it hasn't. Um, that said, it's been a singular privilege to um, be able to talk to people with a problem that's disabling and not recognised where they haven't been treated seriously and be able to change that to something that's beginning to be understood, that has a real hope for, um, hope for proper, proper management. The people with visual snow, don't give up. Keep your eye on the prize. And if you can be involved, help us with things as they go, because we will make a difference. The biggest thing I, I, can, I can recommend is patients take this, um, take this under their control. And, uh, you know, rather than find physicians for now until some kind of registry comes up or some kind of list comes up, they should just take papers, take, uh, you know, uh, take stuff from the Visual Snow Conference and give it to their doctor and say, listen, I think I have this, and let the doctor read the material and go from there. Um, three things. So I think I'd like to tell people with visual snow or people that are um, dealing with visual snow or suffering from their visual snow, first, uh, that there is hope. 
I mean, there are people around the world now researching this. Uh, awareness is increasing in the medical community. Uh, and there's organizations like the Visual Snow Initiative that are essentially moving the ball forward to help uh, increase awareness and help raise funding so that hopefully someday in the near future, hopefully, we'll have an understanding of the cause of visual snow and we'll have a treatment protocol for visual snow as well. Number two, in the meantime, uh, don't lose hope. I mean, there are things you can be doing now in order to help learn to manage your own symptoms. Uh, there's people like me and others that have learned how to happily coexist with their symptoms. They live full lives. I travel the world. I, you know, uh, I have a, my own company. I mean, I have a, a normal functioning life and I'm doing just fine. Uh, and third, if you can, try to reframe your um, relationship to your symptoms or change your relationship with your symptoms. If you can reframe this experience as, as something that's an opportunity rather than something that's negative that happened to you, that can have a tremendous impact on, um, on how you, on your long-term outcomes. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, you know, why do I invest time essentially speaking on this topic? Um, I, I really don't have a lot of free time, but it's important enough to me that I, I do make time in order to speak at conferences and to uh, help raise awareness where possible. And the reason's pretty simple. When I was at that first meditation retreat and I started to realize that I, I might actually have something here, that this could actually be helping me learn how to cope with my symptoms, I got a bit excited about the idea that, well, maybe this is an opportunity for me to help others who are suffering with visual snow or other symptoms by essentially promoting the use of mindfulness practices in order to help manage this. And as soon as I changed my relationship with my symptoms from something that, you know, is this terrible thing that happened to me to, you know, this just kind of, you know, sometimes annoying companion that is constantly reminding me about important things in life, uh, you know, things to not take for granted, that had a fundamental change on my overall perception of this the visual snow thing. The first thing I'd say to people who had visual snow is you're not on your own. It might feel like it, you might feel abandoned and you might have had a bad time from a medical profession. And they didn't really mean bad, they just didn't know. Um, ignorance is not a good thing. So don't feel, you're not on your own, you're not the only person with it. And there's a great deal of interest in it. It's of its time. I'd say to someone with visual snow, not only don't feel alone, but feel optimistic because work's going on and the interest is developing and things will get better. What I would like to say to the visual snow community is that visual snow is real. Um, it exists, it is a condition, uh, whatever disease, whatever you want to call it, I don't like to address it as a disease, it's really a condition. And uh, you know, the key thing to this is awareness. So if you feel you have it, seek doctors, educate doctors uh, about this condition. Don't give up, you know, we are our own best advocates. So be the best advocate you possibly can. For my colleagues, I say, listen, keep your mind open, uh, learn from your patients, uh, search the internet, broaden, broaden your, um, your, uh, your, your knowledge base, and keep an open mind to patients that come in with this, despite the fact that they may have normal exams, and, uh, and communicate. Because I really think that, you know what, this is a team effort. We're not going to do it ourselves. There'll be patients working the public, patients working with healers, working with physicians and, and, and other caregivers. And I would also say to anybody that is watching or has heard about Visual Snow, you know, thank you for giving the time to learn about our cause and learn about our condition and that to please help spread the word. <laughs>